Thank you everyone for joining us tonight for our regular planning meeting of September. We have all members of council present, Councillor Link from Ward 1, Councillor Bussetti from Ward 2, Councillor Kleiber from Ward 3 is on the phone, Councillor Prague from Ward 4, and we have our CAO, Brent Olnick, on the online with us as well, and our planner from Red River Planning, Derek Eno, with us. Thank you. I will read the resolution to open up our meeting this evening. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bussetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Councillor Link, go ahead. Of, of course, I'm going to vote to accept this agenda as it appears on the RM website and on the all net meetings. Uh, my vote is uh, not uh, does not indicate acceptance of additions to the agenda after the meeting has taken place. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor? Opposed, and that favor. is carried. Thank you. All right, I will read the res resolution to open up our first public hearing for this evening. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded. Councillor Prague, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Eno, I will turn it over to you to walk us through your report. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just going to share my screen here so I can take you through a few, uh, a few graphics. So as noted, uh, the first application is uh, variance file BO83-21. It's for property uh, with a roll number of 23300. Uh, uh, it's located along Prest Avenue. There is no uh, address for it yet. And the purpose is to increase the size of a construction so sign. So construction sign is uh, any sign that identifies a construction project and information uh, related to that project. It, I think we've probably all seen these before uh, in and around West St. Paul and, and throughout the city. Uh, I might say something like phase one lots now selling or development coming soon, those, those types of things. Uh, your bylaw restricts construction size signs to a maximum size of 64 square feet and 15 feet in height. The applicant is proposing to erect a sign that's 240 square feet and 17 feet uh, tall. I should say this is a, a kind of a typical size uh, sign that we that we see around uh, on development sites. So here's just a graphic showing you where the property is, and should it's right next to uh, Press Road, and then and then the perimeter highway just to the north. And I uh, should note that the applicant has proposed that the sign is going to be facing towards the road so people can see the graphics from the road. And as the development is, uh, is getting built out, the sign is going to be moved from the east portion of the lot towards the west portion of the lot as phases come into construction. Here's just a bit of a graphic that the applicant has provided, just explaining that, once again, showing that the sign is going to be placed in one location for right now. And then we'll migrate to the west as uh, as the subdivision is uh, is getting built out. And then finally, just a graphic showing the uh, what the sign is going to look like and the uh, the size of it there. You can see it's advertising the name of the new uh, subdivision, uh, Meadowland of West St. Paul. We're recommending that this could be approved uh, subject to the conditions in uh, in front of you which include uh, that the variance is limited to what's been proposed, as well as uh, that they have to obtain all required uh, permits from our office. That's all I have at this point, ma'am. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Great, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Mr. Eno. I will turn it over to council here to see if there are any questions. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Yes, Mr. Eno. Um, uh, on page six of the Lombard North Group Planners Landscape Art 
architects project managers presentation. They talk about Schedule C and the proposed sign dimensions and appearance illustrates the dimensions of the proposed construction sign as well as the graphical concept for the sign. Subject to change at the developer's discretion as the development progresses through its phases. Now, this doesn't mean, I'm sure, that the dimensions will change, but the content of what appears on the sign may change. Am I correct? That is my understanding as, as well. I'm sure the developer can, uh, can, can clarify, but as, as you've seen the graphic, it currently says um, phase one starting fall. I'm, I'm sure what they mean is to change stuff like that. Phase two starting whatever date, phase three and so on. Okay, well, they want a blanket variance um, to shift the location, but it doesn't say that um, anything about the content. So yeah, that would be good if they could comment on the content, okay? And now, oh, I guess this next question I have is probably for the applicant. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Rossetti, any questions for our planner? No questions, thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Eno? No, thank you. And Councillor Craig, any questions? No questions, thank you. No questions from me as well. Thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have uh, anyone on the line? Do we have the applicant on the line wanting to speak to, uh, to the application and the sign? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have John and Brandon Powell with us this evening. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? We can. Welcome. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Um, Brandon Powell from Lombard North Group here to represent uh, the developers of Meadowlands uh, Residential Development in West St. Paul. Um, thank you to uh, Mr. Eno for his presentation. He's articulated everything uh, very well, so I'll try to make my presentation brief. Uh, he's addressed most things that I've, I've got in my presentation, so I'll, I'll uh, whip through this as quick as, and painlessly as possible. Um, does somebody have my presentation available to put on the screen? Yes, thank you. We will share the screen here at administration. Okay. Just uh, let me know when it's up and then uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to see it on my, oh, here, here it comes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, we can change the slides here. So again, uh, just repeating what Mr. Eno had uh, had discussed, the, the intent here is to uh, seek an increase in the area and height of the proposed construction signage beyond the existing regulations of the zoning bylaw. Uh, in addition, we talked about uh, uh, the blanket variance here, just giving the, the developers some flexibility to, to shift the sign uh, along, um, I guess, the northern part of the development as, uh, as development uh, phases continue on. The development phases are, are, are really intended to go from, from east to west. So having the flexibility to, uh, uh, to relocate the signage without uh, having to, to bother you good folks with uh, uh, variance after variance, uh, we thought was probably the best way to streamline things. Um, next, uh, next page, please. Again, just highlighting that uh, uh, what we're trying to do here is, is increase the sign from a maximum, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the site uh, area from a maximum of 64 square feet to 240 uh, square feet and the height from a maximum of 15 feet to 17 feet. Next slide. Again, for context, uh, uh, as indicated by the green X on this slide, uh, the proposed signage uh, will be located along the northern side of the development uh, facing the perimeter highway. 
and located just west of phase one, which is shown in, in the blue graphic there, uh, which is currently under construction. Next slide. Uh, the signage setbacks uh, uh, will be in compliance with, uh, with all the zoning bylaw regulations. Um, and as development progresses, we'll, we'll look at shifting that sign uh, in that location that's, uh, that's illustrated there in a, in a, in a uh, red square. It says future signage relocation area. Uh, again, as the development phases continue from east to west along that, uh, that area, uh, the signage will continue to shift um, as well. Um, and in doing so, the developers will maintain compliance with setback regulations as the, as the signs shift. Next slide. Again, uh, just a, a graphic illustration of the proposed sign showcasing the imagery and information about the development. Um, there was a question earlier about uh, whether or not uh, the dimensions of the signage would change or the, uh, uh, the graphic and content would change. Uh, the dimension, dimensions of the sign will not change. Um, the graphics and content may change uh, as indicated by Mr. Eno this one, this particular image here is focused on phase one in the fall of 2021. Of course, that will change over time. And uh, we also have some build, builders uh, showcased at the bottom of that sign. Of course, those builders may change over time as well. This is a long-term project. Uh, we may have an opportunity to add builders or change builders um, as, uh, as the development requires. Um, Again, the sign is intended to draw attention from uh, to the residential development from the perimeter highway and enhance visibility, enhance visibility from faster moving traffic at a at a distance. Next slide. Um, there were some precedent examples of similar size signs uh, around the arm of West St. Paul. Um, sorry, the labeling here is a little bit small, but the dimensions are are quite similar. Uh, we've got. Uh, at the very top of the screen there, uh, west side, uh, water side developments, I uh, apologize. Um, moving clockwise, uh, River Springs Grove sign, uh, forthright property sign, and, uh, and the trails of West St. Paul as, as some of the examples that would be signs of similar uh, size and dimension to the one that we're proposing. And then next slide. Uh, with respect to the variance requirements, we, we understand we must meet the following criteria in terms of com uh, com compatibility. Uh, the proposed residential construction sign is compatible with emerging residential development, no detrimental effect. The sign is temporary and be positioned on undeveloped land so as not to affect people or property. Uh, minimum modification, the proposed modification will enhance visibility and is uh, comparable in size with similar existing signs in the RM. We, uh, to build on that, we actually uh, uh, spoke with uh, a signage company here that we use quite often in developments to get their opinion on appropriate uh, size and dimension of sign. And this is what they came back with as well. Um, and finally, consistency. Uh, as specifically outlined in the letter, the intent submitted with the application, the proposed variance is generally consistent with the applicable RM policies and regulations, except where otherwise stated in this presentation. And that is all for me. I'm happy to take any questions. Great, thank you for your presentation. I will go around our virtual council table here and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. Powell? No questions, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber, any questions? No questions. Councillor Prague. No questions, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Powell? A quick question. On page three of your report, um, the sign will be removed when no longer required to showcase the development. Um, it's temporary. What will the indicators um, be that the sign is no longer needed to showcase the development? Um, we will eventually run out of space. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it'll, when it'll, the development is finished. Yeah, it, 
as as development progresses from east to west, we'll eventually absorb all of the uh, the land adjacent to uh, the perimeter highway, anything facing the perimeter highway. So once we've uh, we've completed our subdivision of the very last possible location for the sign, uh, it will be removed. So your build out is about a number of years away, isn't it? <laughs> I I suspect so. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have a request, uh, Mr. Powell. Um, people, um, this, is, this development is occurring in my ward and people often ask about what are the phases and I, I have looked and looked, I can only find, as is in your presentation, at phase one. So is it possible to get a map out of all of the phases that are planned? Yes, if it's not currently on the website, I can speak with the developers about placing uh, a phasing map on there. There will be a disclaimer on the phasing map that this is conceptual and dependent on absorption, of course, and, and market forces. Phases may change over time, so it, it'll be conceptual in nature and there'll just be a little disclaimer there. Understood. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good questions. I, and I think that the map is up on your website. Take a second look, but I have uh, sent that to residents. So um, definitely, if you guys have it up on the website for people to see, that would be great. Perfect. I like that you've identified um, an area there that the sign would remain in. So as per the wording of our resolution, um, that the variance, if it is approved, um, is presumed approved as presented that you guys would leave the sign in the red area that you've identified in your map. Is that correct? Correct. And then as Councillor Link pointed out, recognizing that this is probably going to be a build out of five, 10 years, maybe in this area that you guys will be maintaining the sign and it will uh, be good quality um, because it will be up for many years, I'm sure. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's the beacon for the development, and and this I know this development group is uh, wants to take very good care of what's happening here, and uh, this is a, a showcase piece for them, and the signage is included in that. Great, thank you. Those are all the questions that I have. Thank you both. Thank you. I'm going to see if we have anyone registered to speak in support, opposition, or for information, and then you'll both have an opportunity to speak again. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone wanting to speak to this application? No one else registered to speak on this application. All right, that makes it easy enough. Anything that you gentlemen would like to add then before we close the public hearing? Nope. Great. Thank you both. I will read the resolution then to close our public hearing. Be it resolved that council do, by, do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. I will read our resolution. Whereas an application for variance order 8321 was received for a property adjacent to Prest Avenue, roll number 29300, to increase the permitted area and height for construction signage from 64 square feet maximum area and 15 feet maximum height to 240 square foot maximum area and 17 feet maximum height. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 8321 with the following conditions. One, this variance is limited to what is proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new variance approval. Two, applicant owner obtains all required permits and approval, including but not limited to those from the Red River Planning District and Manitoba Infrastructure. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the decision. A board, council, or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. 
Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Any discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Prague. Is there anything about maintenance of the sign that's in kept in good condition? To be adding that as a condition? Yeah, so it's being kept up and not torn apart and things like that. Yeah. That's all. Good point. <clears throat> Other members of council okay with an added condition, signed to be maintaining good condition? I'm seeing nods from Councillor Bersetti. Councillor Link, are you okay with that? Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Are you okay with that additional condition? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Eno. How would that be worded as a third condition then? I think very similar to what you just said, that the sign is maintained in good repair. Perfect. I had a mover and a seconder on this. Uh, the mover was Councillor Link. The seconder was Councillor Busetti. You're both okay with the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Preg. Any other comments, discussions regarding this application? Hearing and seeing none then, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. All right, we are on to item 5.2 and I will read the resolution to open our next public hearing. Be it resolved at the meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pereg, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's favor. Is Thank you. And I will turn it back over to you, Mr. Eno. Thank you. I'm just sharing my screen there. I hope you all can see it. Uh, as you noted, this is variance uh, 8421. It's for roll number 240. It's also for a property on Press Road for the same applicants for the same reason uh, to increase the sign of a construction uh, sign. Uh, so once again, they want to increase the size to uh, 240 square feet and 17 feet tall. Uh, but this sign is going to be located on a different property at the west end of the property facing towards McPhillips. And uh, here's just a graphic outlining uh, sort of the, the whole development in phase one there you can see, as well as where the signs are going to be located uh, with the X there facing towards uh, McPhillips, uh, I guess across the street from uh, your business park there. And once again, the, uh, the graphic of the sign, uh, same as the last one, showing the name as well as the phase and some builders on the property there. Uh, that's all I have, uh, uh, Madam Mayor. We're recommending approval subject to the same conditions as the last one that uh, it's as proposed as well as that they obtain all required permits. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eno. We'll see if there's any questions for you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for our planner on this application? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? No, thank you. And Councillor Bussetti? No questions, thank you. Thank you. No questions for me either, thank you. Ms. Elias, we have the applicants still on the line. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have again, Brandon and John Powell. Hello again. Welcome back. <laughs> um, exact same presentation uh, as, as the previous application here. So I'll, I'll probably skip through some slides if that's okay. Um, I'm wondering if uh, we can bring slide number four up for this particular application. Again, no changes between this, uh, this application and the previous application. Signage, uh, 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 proposed signage uh, uh, is exactly the same. The only difference here is location. Um, and if we go to slide number four, location uh, denoted by the, uh, uh, the green X uh, on this particular slide here. Uh, 
uh, facing uh, McPhillip Street. Um, just wanted to indicate that this location will be near the secondary uh, access point into this development uh, at a future date. Um, so the, uh, there's some prominence to this particular location. Unlike the previous application, this this uh, signage location will be static. It will this the, the sign will not move from this location until uh, the development uh, is complete and it's time to remove the uh, the sign. Um, again, uh, signage setbacks on the following page uh, are in compliance with all regulations and the zoning bylaw, and uh, otherwise. Uh, exact same uh, uh, presentation as the previous one. Um, I think you have the nuts and bolts of what we're trying to achieve here. So I'll conclude my presentation and, and uh, I'm happy to answer any further questions. Great. Thank you for your presentation. I will go around our council table. Councillor Preg, any questions for Mr. Powell? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Powell? No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions? No questions. Thank you. And Councillor Bersetti, any questions? No, thank you. And no questions for me as well. Thank you, guys. We'll see if there's anyone registered to speak in support, opposition, or for information. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone registered? No one else registered for this item. Okay. Thank you. Anything else that you would like to add, Mr. Powell? Uh, nothing for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I will then read the resolution to close the public hearing. Thank you both for being available. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Move by Councillor Preg, second to Councillor Bersetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Councillor Kleiber, do we still have you there? Sorry, in favor. Thank you. And that is carried. I will read the resolution and we can discuss. Whereas an application for variance 8421 was received for a property adjacent to Prest Avenue, roll number 240, to increase the permitted area and height of construction for construction signage from 64 square feet maximum area and 15 feet maximum height to 240 square foot maximum area and 17 feet maximum height. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application, Therefore, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the Arm of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 8421 with the following conditions. One, the variance is limited to what is proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new variance approval. Two, applicant owner obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the Red River Planning District and Manitoba Infrastructure. Ms. Torino, what did we have for number three on the other one in terms of quality? We had down uh, that the sign is maintained in good repair. Okay, three, the sign is maintained in good repair. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preg, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any discussion? I would have one point maybe for consideration um, that I would ask Mr. Eno and Council about, and that might be that um, the RM to determine the exact location um, to be approved by the CAO. And I suggest that because um, their area that they're wanting to put this up is right adjacent to Rossmore. And I wouldn't want drivers to have trouble seeing north or south. And sometimes the placement of a sign can be obstructive to drivers. Um, so my suggestion if council accepts an added condition would be in this location, um, the RM is to determine the location approved by the CAO. Is that something that Mr. Eno, I'll pass that to you. 
Uh, I, I just like to point out that uh, the applicants will have to go to Manitoba uh, Highways Planning Division uh, just to get things double checked for that very reason. Um, so I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's a redundant to put that in. Uh, I'd also wouldn't want to see um, uh, the highways say one thing and and the RM say something else. So just food for thought. No, it's a good point. There's a couple of locations in RRM where a sign's been approved by MI that it's set back far enough from the highway, but when drivers are there and turn to look for traffic, that it's right in the sight line, although it's out of the MI area and they're fine with it. So from my comfort in knowing that that's a high traffic area, I would also like someone from our municipality to have input on that with MI, if council is agreeable to that, if our CAO believes that that would be appropriate as well. Okay. Is the mover and seconder okay with that amendment? It was moved by Councillor Prague, second and Councillor Brissetti. Okay, so Mr. Eno, if we could add RM to determine location with MI. Any other comments from council? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. All right, we are on to item 5.3, and I will read the resolution to open the public hearing. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded. Councillor Link, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Yes, carried. Thank you. Mr. Eno, I will turn it back over to you. Okay, as you noted, this is variance application 92 of 21. It's for a property located at 26 Griffin Way. Uh, and the purpose is to increase the site coverage for the development of a single family home from the maximum of 10% to 10.81%. And this is a rural residential lot. Um, like I said, it's just to increase the, the maximum site coverage. So that's everything that's covered on the ground floor. Uh, up to 10.81, it's just a smidge over. I should just note for council that this is within 10% of the requirements. Uh, the uh, planning district staff do have approval to sign off on some in-house variances within 10%, uh, but they only have to do with uh, setbacks. So in terms of lot cover or coverage area, we can't do that, it has to come to council. So there's a uh, rather old air photo of the, the subject property. I think this is uh, probably the last undeveloped uh, lot on this street. And here's just a graphic showing the, uh, the layout of the, um, of the proposed uh, new house. Uh, and just in the context of size of what we're talking here, uh, it's to increase uh, in square footage about 470 square feet um, beyond what would typically be allowed on this property. And the property is 1.33 acres in size. Uh, we're recommending that this could be approved subject to the uh, conditions in front of you that are, sorry, the page, that the variance is limited to what has been proposed in the application. Any changes would have to come back to council. And number two, that the applicant owner obtained all required permits and approvals from the planning district. Thank you, Mayor. Great, thank you, Mr. Eno. I'll go around our virtual council table here and see if there are any questions for you. Councilor Brissetti, any questions for Mr. Eno? Nope, just thanks for the clarification about that 10%. I'm sure one of us would have asked it, so thanks. Councillor Cliver, any questions for Mr. Eno? Mr. Eno, just wondering on the drawing that I'm looking at, um, where, where is the 10 where are they going over the 10 percent is it with the uh, deck that they're putting on no it's not with the deck um it's it's hard to say what would be going over because we measure the entire um uh, ground floor everything that's at at grade so 
Um, it, it could be any any spot really. It doesn't have to do with one particular uh, feature of the house, I guess I could say. So any further changes to this site plan, for example, if they wanted a bigger deck, if they want to add something else, uh, they'd have to come back for another variance then, right? That's right. If they went beyond a, uh, a what council might approve as a site coverage, they'd have to come back to you. And was the deck included in this um, site coverage? I don't believe so. I think it's uh, so long as it's an uncovered uh, decks and patios are not included in site coverage. But if you went to go uh, put a roof over it and make it more like a sunroom, then it becomes uh, part of the site coverage. Hmm. Okay. Interesting, because I believe that we've had some other ones that have come back for variances, but they, they might be because they're uh, too close to a garage or something. Okay, yeah. so even if they put this deck up, they're okay as far as the percentages go? Yes. That's what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Any questions for Mr. Eno? No questions, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any questions for Mr. Eno? Questions, thanks. Thank you. Councillor Bersetti, did you have your hand up? Yeah, just, just for clarification, just on what Councillor Kleiber is saying, does it not say in here somewhere that it, it is something with the garage and the deck? That is, sorry, I'm just skimming through at the same time, but somewhere it said something about the deck. Okay, yeah, never mind, that's fine. Okay. Any other questions? And no questions from me. Thank I you, think, Mr. you know, excuse me. Oh, go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. I think, uh, uh, Councillor Bruschetti, what you're referring to is in the analysis, it does say that um, the deck and the, propo the proposed attached deck and existing attached garage are to be considered part of the main building for calculating the overage, the, t the percentage. Yeah, so exactly. Right just got Thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have the applicant on the line for council? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. The applicant was reached out to, uh, he wasn't sure if he'd be able to attend this evening and we don't see him here. Uh, and we don't have anyone else registered in support, in opposition or for information. Thank you. And I will read the resolution to close the public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. I will read the resolution. Whereas an application for variance order 9221 was received for the property located at 26 Griffin Way to increase the permitted site coverage for a single family home in a RR rural residential zone from 10% maximum to 10.81 maximum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it, result, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 9221 with the following conditions. One, this variance is limited to what is proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new variance approval. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits and approvals from the Red River Planning District. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none then, um, I will request a recorded vote and I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. 
opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I think that concludes our planning matters for this evening. Thank you so much. Good. Have a Thank good you. Have a good evening. All right, we are on to item 6.1. Uh, there for information, our Red River Planning District Activity Report, and I will turn that over to you, Mr. CAO, and see if there's anything that you're wanting to add to the information available here on our agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, I just wanted to uh, start including these, these uh, Red River Planning Reports on a monthly basis. Uh, gives a good indication uh, a picture in time of what's going on in 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 uh, West St. Paul and in the region, and uh, you know if you go to this report, you could compare what's taking place in West St. Paul to to other uh, to Selkirk, East St. Paul, St. Andrews, St. Clement. Uh, you can also get a picture of what's going on in in West St. Paul. Uh, for example, uh, up to July year to date in July. Last year, we had 43 permits taken out for single family dwellings. And this year, up to July, we were at 169. So uh, four times the, uh, the amount of permits just for uh, single family dwellings. And there's been 489 permits issued in West St. Paul through the uh, Red River Planning District. So there's some really good uh, uh, data there. And if you go to look on the full year, and this is on the permits issued report, um, West St. Paul has already issued as, as many permits. And this is for a number of different things like uh, decks, accessory buildings, plumbing permits and that. But we've issued as many this year by July as we have done all of last year. So um, it's, 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 it's busy in the region. Everybody's doing, uh, uh, higher business than they have done last year, but especially West St. Paul. So that data is there for, for you to look at. And then there's uh, Red River planning applications. So uh, we also can see what's going on in the region and and, uh, and West St. Paul is uh, year to date to July, 62% higher in this region. Uh, applications to the Red River Planning Department have created $238,000 in revenue. And, and a key one is the subdivision applications have contributed $184,000. So uh, I encourage council to look at these reports, look at what's going on in other areas. And this gives you a really good snapshot of uh, the Red River Planning District. They publish it on on their website and uh, I always watch it and I, I decided that we needed to uh, publish this for us so our council's informed about the region and the public and uh, more easily see what's going on in the region uh, in West St. Paul and other communities. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I think it's a great idea that we're including that now. I'll go around the table and see if there are any uh, questions, comments regarding the RRPD uh, report. Councillor Bersetti, any comments? Yes, sir. Thank you. Councillor Prague. No comment, just good information. Thank you. Councillor Link. I can clear, yeah, it's a good idea to include. It doesn't, doesn't hurt, that's for sure. It can help, thanks. Thank Councillor Kleiber. No question. Thank you. I think it's good information. I'd also uh, want council and our residents to know that uh, as members of the Red River Planning District Board, Councillor Bussetti and I strongly advocated for uh, hiring additional staff, recognizing this permit load. Um, and so the, a lot of the permit load is from uh, new residents, um, but our existing residents should not be negatively impacted and should have quick turnaround time for decks, for sheds, um, for rebuilding single family homes after a fire. And so uh, Councillor Bussetti and I were successful in advocating uh, additional hires. And we felt that we were in a strong position to do that as a municipality that has brought in $238,000 in revenue for Red River Planning, um, that we advocated and were successful at convincing the board to hire three more permit 
uh, review reviewers so that uh, the permit process could go faster for existing and new residents. And that was approved and fully supported by the entire Red River Planning Board. Um, so I wanted council to know that and be aware. Mr. CEO, go ahead. I just want to add, uh, Mayor, so that's an additional 238,000 on planning applications, but uh, West Eaton Polo also um, provided $545,000 additional revenue from permit fees too. So uh, fees, fees from mostly new development in West St. Paul uh, for Red River Planning, which really helps out Red River Planning are, are almost at a million dollars this year. And that, that would be, I believe, more than their whole budget uh, last year. Absolutely. And the board discussed that and how much West St. Paul is contributing to, to Red River planning financially. Absolutely. It also uh, gave them finances to be able to uh, purchase um, cloud permit so that our existing residents in West St. Paul shouldn't have to drive to Selkirk to get a deck permit to monitor the status of their permit um, and, and get that permit information when it's done. So um, even though there's a lot of new development going on, we're very focused on how that new development can help existing residents and make life easier for all of us. So if our residents don't have to drive to Selkirk, which was currently the process up to about six months ago, and they can fill out all their permits online, and the purchase of that cloud permit was over $80,000. Um, so it's a costly uh, expense and additional staff had to come in and help with that process. So uh, any way that it can help existing residents, and, and as much as we have challenges with Red River planning at times in terms of keeping up with permits, um, it should be noted and they should be commended that having four times the number of permits and having a turnaround time still within about 20, 25 days um, when they're short staffed is the, through COVID is still pretty amazing. So I was happy that the board fully supported additional resources and staff for them so that they can further reduce that turnaround time for permits. Councillor Preg, go ahead. Any news how that new thing, the cloud permitting is work? Is it working or is there flaws in it? Any background on it? We haven't heard about flaws. Um, they were good about posting um, information um, online that how you register for it. So I think for people that have never used it before, there's a process of figuring out how to use it, but it, it, it walks you through it online. I took a look myself. What, what are residents looking at when they want to pull a permit? So it does walk you through the process. I think they engaged with home builders because they're using it a lot. Um, and so that okay. they could figure it out. Um, the one drawback that Councillor Bussetti and I talked to the board about was um, it would be great if they had a way to track complaints as part of that, but they don't. Um, so they're going to have to have a different complaint process that's separate from the cloud permit process. Um, they're working on that. But otherwise, uh, unless any of you have heard negative feedback on the cloud permit process, and if you have, we want to make sure our residents are reaching out and letting them know so they can adjust and fix it. Uh, Mayor Christian. Go ahead, did, um, all, yeah, did all of the um, RMs contribute to the cloud system? Didn't we do additional contributions, all the RMs for that system? I believe that came out of their budget. It was a budgeted item when we did the budget for our PD. So it came out of, yeah, yeah it came out of their budget. Right, and then we—I know that we we are, our fees went up this year. To all the fees for every every RM went up in order to to purchase that software. Is that not correct? I believe all our fees went up to hire additional uh, a develop development officer, oh. and I can't remember the exact term of the development officer. But our fees went up um, to be able to hire somebody else at the counter. That when. Um, developers come in and they want to do subdivisions or people are wanting to ask questions about permit applications that somebody would be on hand at the counter to go through that and have full understanding of zoning. So that additional um, fee is to cover um, that additional hire. Otherwise, um, yeah. the, the money coming to hire the three additional people for um, staff um, because they're over budget, way over uh, income that they mm -hmm. anticipated because of the growth in West St. Paul, they're able to hire three additional 
staff okay, okay. to deal with yeah. permits. They're able to have cloud permit. Um, and so they haven't been constrained in terms of financial resources and we can, they can thank West St. Paul for that. Oh, I, my understanding was when we had a meeting with uh, uh, Jennifer Ferguson, it was that everyone contributed extra fees from their RMs for purchasing the software. But you're saying that we got extra staff now as well. So that's great. So hopefully some of these permits will go through a lot faster and not get stopped at, uh, you know, all the little, we've had so many complaints of people waiting so long for garage permits. So and let's hope that uh, this expedites it much more quickly. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody's ever getting complaints, I know that I've talked to some residents about the process and, and going on the Red River Planning District website, at the top of their website, they have a dashboard. So it tells you um, how long you can expect to wait. And it's their, their target right now is 20 working days and they try and hit that target. So for residents that have asked me, what's the wait time? I direct them to the website, that dashboard, if it's gonna change during peak times when they were getting completely overwhelmed and all of the permits were coming for single family homes. Um, I believe that changed to 25 days, 28 days. Um, so it's good for our residents to be able to see that. And if they're using the cloud permit, it tracks the status of their permit. So that's helpful too. The other thing we, we paid extra for uh, was our zoning bylaw that we would all contribute money to all of the zoning bylaws being updated. And uh, that's been put on hold because of COVID and because mm. of staff shortages at Red River Planning. So that was another reason we wanted to make sure that they had enough staff so that we could get our zoning bylaw updated. So, lots of positive developments. All right, if there's no further comments on the Red River Planning Report, I will move on. We have confirmation of the minutes. We have our regular meeting of August 12th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on August 12th, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Craig, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Any comments, questions regarding the regular minutes of October 12th? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. We have 7.2, our Committee of the Whole meeting, August 10th, be it resolved that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of council held on August 10th, 2020 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any comments regarding Committee of the Whole minutes? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. We have our special meeting of August 26th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on August 26, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Rossetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion on those minutes? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. And finally, we have our special meeting of September 1st. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on September 1st, 2021 be approved. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Any comments, discussion on those minutes? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Favor. Opposed, and that is carried. We have no delegations for this evening, and we have uh, one bylaw for consideration, 9.1. First reading of land expropriation bylaw 2021-11. I will read the resolution and then ask the CEO or Ms. Elias to present. Be it resolved that Bylaw 2021-11 being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to expropriate a portion of land as has been discussed with the property owners of the land for the purpose of extending Eames Road in order to create a safer intersection with Garden View Drive be read a first time as amended. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Before Council discusses, I'm gonna turn it over to the CAO and Mr. CEO, if you or Ms. Elias are wanting to present on this. Yeah, I'll just, uh, this is this is Pam's uh, uh, project to report on, but uh, I, I just want to um, 
say that there's a word being used here, expropriation. This is just a term that uh, land titles is using with us. Uh, if it's anything, we call it a friendly expropriation. So it's a term they have to use. So if, if you would see this and, and be alarmed, you shouldn't. I'll let Pam explain it further, but I just want from the outset of her, uh, of, of what's going on here to point out to you, this isn't an expropriation like you might think that you've heard of. Uh, we've never done one in West St. Paul while I've been here, but you might have heard of, of lands being expropriated from, from the public. This isn't, uh, this isn't like that, but that term is used. And I'll hand it over to Pam. Thank you, Mr. Scale. I'll just share my screen. Sorry, just one moment. Okay. So this evening we have bylaw 2021-11 ready for first reading. This bylaw is to ex expropriate 0.2 acres of land in order to relocate a portion of Eames Road where it connects to Garden View Drive. Uh, this is being done in order to improve the angle of the current intersection and, imp <clears throat> and improve safety, uh, traffic safety and accessibility. This process is supported by the developer who will be responsible for the costs and the work involved with relocating the portion of the road. Uh, this developer, he's also the, uh, um, the person that owns the land that would be expropriated, um, and that would be expropriated at no compensation by the RM. Again, as Mr. CAO uh, mentioned, um, I would just like to clarify from the beginning that um, this could be considered as a, a very friendly expropriation. Um, definitely a bit of a, a scary word, but in this situation, it's something that has been fully supported by the developer slash landowner and has uh, gone forward as recommended by the surveyor involved um, as a way to hopefully be able to make transportation safety improvements quickly and to satisfy uh, requirements by Manitoba infrastructure. So just for a bit of background history on, on this item, uh, the construction of the current Eames Road extension came about through subdivision application S14-2588. This was approved by council in April of 2016. This subdivision, subdivision created 10 M2 heavy industrial zone lots in the RM's business park, which is located to the west of McPhillips, to the south of the perimeter highway, and to the north of the RM's boundary with the city of Winnipeg. <clears throat> One condition of the subdivision approval was that the developer had to receive approval to extend Eames Road westward to, to connect from 2nd Street, where it ended at that time, to Garden View Drive in order to um, provide access to some of the new lots that were being uh, created. Now, Eames Road is actually located within the city of Winnipeg, so approval for the road extension had to come from the city. This was granted in February of 2016, and the extension of Eames Road was subsequently constructed by the developer from 2nd Street to Garden View Drive. During the RM subdivision process, uh, the application was circulated to Manitoba Infrastructure. At that time, uh, they did not pr provide any concerns about the proposed plan, and they recommended it would be it could be approved. However, after construction of the road extension was completed, MI notified the office that it had not issued permits to construct within their highway control zone and that they were not prepared to approve the current road configuration due to the angle of the intersection between Eames Road and Garden View Drive. Uh, they requested instead that Eames Road um, connect to Garden View Drive at a revised angle that would improve safety. Um, so just from this map here, just to give you a, a bit of an idea of the context of the local area, um, it, pardon me, uh, the, the dark black line shows the, the boundary of 
the RM's business park. It's tucked in between the perimeter highway and McPhillips Street. Uh, the area outlined in the dash line, that is the subdivision uh, that was involved with the extension of Eames Road. Eames Road, you can see, is just located outside of the RM boundary, just inside the city of Winnipeg. And the intersection in question, uh, it's circled in red, uh, just at the corner of Eames Road and Garden View Drive. Here you can see a bit more detail and the current intersection angle between Eames Road and Garden View Drive. The proposed realignment is shown here. It's a, it's a bit of a simplistic drawing, but you can see uh, the current location of Eames on the uh, west side of the road. Uh, the angle is at about 105 degrees, and on the east side, it's about 75 degrees where the new road, uh, it would have 90 degree angles on both sides, which is uh, uh, considered to be a safer intersection. And this shows the portion of land required to be expropriated in order to allow the road realignment. Uh, again, the land needed would be 0 0.2 acres. This would leave the existing lot one with 1.21 acres which is under the minimum lot size required for an M2 heavy industrial zone property, which, um, which would be 1.377 acres. Hmm. Uh, however, under the Planning Act, no variance approval would be required to allow um, this to occur in this instance. I'll also note just for some background information, there are currently a number of lots in the business park that are under the minimum lot size, uh, a lot of them uh, closer to uh, the one acre uh, area size. We've aims to address this matter. Uh, a number of discussions have taken place with the developer, their engineer and surveyor, as well as MI and municipal legal representatives. Uh, the best course of action to quickly address the safety concern was determined to be for the municipality to expropriate a portion of 433 Eames Road, which again is owned by the developer, in order to use uh, for the road realignment. Once approved, the developer would then be able to remove and reconstruction the, uh, reconstruct the portion of Eames Road nearest Garden View Drive. In preparation of moving forward, the developer has submitted revised engineered drawings to the of the road construction, which have been reviewed and signed off by MI, the city of Winnipeg, and uh, our municipal engineers as well. Municipal lawyers have completed their review of the bylaw and have made changes since the municipal agenda was posted earlier this week. Um, you received those changes earlier today. These changes, uh, just to provide a brief overview, uh, they included adding sections 13.4, 13.5, and 13.7 of the Expropriation Act to the text of the bylaw. Uh, it also reworded the description of the land being expropriated and added um, text clarifying that the RM wouldn't be providing any compensation for the land. It's recommended that first reading can proceed uh, as amended in order to allow further review and steps to be taken. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Elias. I will go around our council table here and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Prague, any questions for Ms. Elias? No questions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Ms. Elias? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Bersetti, any questions? Questions, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions? I do have some comments. Um, I'm pleased to hear that the applicant wants to make safety improvements now. The angle uh, for the road uh, for, for traffic being seen coming from the west, it makes it very difficult. Uh, I saw tire tracks of large trucks very near the marker for the gas line. Uh, right very close to the edge of the road. Now the RM is the applicant for this bylaw. And that being the case, um, I am surprised that this is the first reading of the bylaw 
is the first time council is getting information on, uh, yes, maybe not a, a huge issue, but it's a problematic, problematic stretch of road and the road inter intersection. I'm wondering when this issue of safety at the intersection of Eames and Garden View Drive arose. When did it come to the attention of administration? And how did the issue come to the attention of the administration? Um, council was not notified that there was an issue and I'm wondering why that was. Um, I have more comments to make with regards to the administration report. Now, uh, can, would you like me to go on or would you like to stop and address the questions so far? I, I can address that question. Um, it is something that's been on, on the radar for, for quite some time. Um, it's been a bit complicated, uh, I think, because uh, a portion is within the RM, a portion is with the city of Winnipeg, uh, then MI is also involved. Um, I can say that MI, they received um, an application to uh, adjust the intersection in July of 2020. Um, they approved it at that time. Uh, for the city of Winnipeg, this also went to, to their council. Um, and that was just back in uh, August of this year when they uh, approved uh, the road adjustment there. Once we had uh, confirmation of that, then we, we proceeded here. Thank you. And I, I just wanna make comments and this is not a criticism of your report. Um, uh, in the second paragraph, am I it says MI did not provide any concerns about the proposed plans and recommended approval. True, absolutely true. I looked back at, I don't know if you can see this, but this was the this was the public hearing notice, March 12, 2015. Um, in the planner's report for March 12th, 2015, the public hearing for S142588, which involved this extension of Third Street and Eames Road, included a note following the comment that MI recommended approval. And that note said, a permit is required from Highway Traffic Board for the change in use of land, construction, so on. On April 14th, 2016, the RM approved the subdivision and condition number nine reiterated, the owner was to obtain approval from the Highway Traffic Board for the change in land use involving the road. And, Condition nine was seen in Red River Planning's conditions for conditional approval later as well. I believe that was in May of 2016. Now, apparently MI did not issue a permit. Did the owners apply for a permit at that time? I think that if, sorry, if I may, um, may respond, uh, I think that is one of the issues where there was uh, some confusion in this application because Eames Road isn't located within the RM's boundary. Um, the, the condition listed on the subdivision that was approved by council uh, was that the applicant owner obtained approval from the city of Winnipeg for extension uh, improvements of Eames Road. That was done. Um, it also lists, as you mentioned, applicant owner obtain approval for Manitoba Traffic Board for change in land use and change in use of, uh, of any existing driveway. Um, so in regards to Eames Road, 
any any notification would have gone to the city of Winnipeg. Uh, if it was in, within our boundary, we would receive notification of, of any approval that, that falls within our boundary. Um, may I add a comment then? Um, Eames Road, the uh, intersection at Eames um, in Garden View involves Crown land. And if it involves Crown land, MI's got to be involved. Um, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I just, uh, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to comprehend that the developer would not have recognized that. Um, is there's a DA um, on this subdivision, isn't there? And it's already registered and so on and so forth, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering how Red River Planning approved this subdivision without, without the applicant fulfilling all of its conditions and, and, and wondering what's in the DA regarding this um, intersection and the fact that Crown land is involved and they, they, they should have been looking for a permit. This is an experienced developer. I'm surprised. Thank you. Uh, yes. I, I wouldn't be able to speak specifically about what uh, Red River had, had received on this application. Right. Um, but the, their process would be to go through um, all of the conditions and make sure that they're satisfied that they have been met um, before Red River would issue a certificate of approval. And that would be needed before the, the lots. Yes, get right yeah, I that. recognize that. So I'm because it's it was a condition, condition number nine um, of Red River's um, conditional approval of that subdivision. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering somehow it didn't get caught. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. And these things happen, as you say. It's a. This this subdivision went through quite a process before it was finally approved. Thanks. And and just to clarify, I would say in regards to condition nine, it refers to um, the applicant owner. Um, receiving approval from the Highway Traffic Board for change in land use. So um, changing, say, from agriculture to industrial, um, but it doesn't reference um, the extension of Eames Road. Um, that would probably, I, I assume, be something that would have been addressed uh, with the City of Winnipeg's road uh, extension application or road opening application. Perhaps, but uh, using a road for uh, uh, pardon me, using land for the new use of a road is a change in use as well, I, th I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Not, not, not important now, I guess. Thank you. Any other questions from council or comments? I guess uh, only one question from me, Ms. Elias, and that is uh, next steps. This is first reading. Does second reading uh, involve a public hearing? Is there no public hearing with this? I'm just wondering how this will proceed from here. My understanding is in this case, a public hearing wouldn't be required. Um, council would be able to uh, proceed with second and third reading. Um, prior to that uh, occurring, um, administration will probably have some additional um, conversations with the, the surveyor involved. Um, in addition to the um, municipal uh, legal represent re representatives as well. Great, thank you, Ms. Elias. And I wanna thank you for your detailed administrative report on this one, very much appreciated. It is a complex issue when it involves MI, a city of Winnipeg road, 
uh, a developer from West St. Paul developing in and uh, adding on to a city of Winnipeg Road that doesn't belong to us. So it's it's a complicated issue and I'm glad that this will be resolved and that safety will be improved. And, and I would just also remind council that we see these things um, when a decision needs to be made in terms of governance and policy and that our role is uh, governance, policy, approving bylaws. So um, I think we get this information in a timely way when uh, decisions are needed at our level. So I thank you, Ms. Elias. Great work on this. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If I can just add, uh, with the resolution at the end, um, would you be able to add as amended to it? I believe I read that. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So we've had discussion. I have a mover and a seconder on this. Any further discussion? Councillor Link, go ahead. I'm sorry. Is this the time to discuss the bylaw or should I be waiting for the second reading? Because I have many questions about the bylaw. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you want me to go ahead with my questions or? or yes, wait go ahead. I'm not going to stop you for asking questions on the bylaw. Uh, every reading that we give is an opportunity to ask questions about the bylaw. You have okay. questions about the specifics of the bylaw? Ms. Elias is available, go ahead. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, why were the changes uh, that we received today, why were those changes in the bylaw required? That's the first question. Jump in there. I, I'm just gonna jump in that, that the changes that, that Pam received for the bylaw uh, we received them from a senior partner at uh, at CDS. So uh, the senior to Maria had the bylaw and returned it to Pam. So that would be uh, probably the senior person for uh, municipal law in Manitoba. So that's uh, where the bylaw has been. I'll, I'll let Pam answer uh, where she can, but that was written by uh, the senior person in Manitoba. Yes, and the, the changes we have provided um, our, our legal firm uh, um, a draft. Um, and once they got um, through it and made the uh, recommended changes, uh, unfortunately, that was received after the agenda was posted. Okay, uh, another question. Do the property owners or the municipality benefit in any way from these changes? How do they benefit from the changes? Mr. CAO or Ms. Elias? Okay, for, for both, there would be improvements for, for safety, um, for the developer. I, I can't speak to them, but um, they, they've sold a number of the lots there. They have a number of, of tenants and businesses in that area um, that I'm sure would uh, be appreciative of, of the changes. Um, with it being a business park, there's a, a lot of truck traffic um, where I'm sure the, the current configuration, it, it's, it's a challenge for them to, to maneuver, um, especially with uh, the winter coming up. Uh, I'm sure snow and icy conditions don't help. Um, and the developer has expressed that uh, the improvements are something that they wanna get done this fall. Um, so that's, that's part of the reason why, why we've gone this route. Um, and I would say for the municipality, we would have the same benefits or see the same benefits uh, that it's, it would be an improvement for, for residents. Good. Um, now on the plan, um, I assume the plan that's been approved by MI is much more detailed than the plan that we see as part of Appendix A. I assume that uh, Crown Lands, you, you're going to see the highway right away, 
the ditches, the drainage facilities, part of the plan. But I guess, and you can confirm this please, that this is not required for this plan that needs to be submitted to um, land titles. That's correct. So what would be submitted to land titles is um, um, the, the plan of road to be opened as shown in Schedule A, that's what they would receive. Um, in terms of construction drawings, those have been prepared and they've been submitted and uh, reviewed. But, sorry, just to clarify, those would have been submitted to um, MI, City of Winnipeg and the RM office. So the RM does have more detailed plans? We do, yes. And would it be too much difficulty to see those more detailed plans? What would be the point of seeing the more detailed plans, Councillor Link? Because I have asked to see them. Do I have to uh, rationalize for you, sir? I'm, I'm asking. Would it be possible? No, but it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, when we start getting into the files of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, if, you know, we bought three quarter, uh, for example, we bought some three quarter down, which, which project was that used on like uh, four or five yards of gravel, or we have a road that we've have engineers, uh, uh, look at and 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 they have degrees in 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 this type of work and our engineer looks at it but i don't see the added value of giving that to to a counselor to uh uh you know to to determine about uh, the road going in when it, it, you know it's a city of winnipeg road their engineers have looked at it our engineers have worked at it it's it's in in a in a busy place uh uh, you know, we ha we have to balance the value of doing all this additional work to what value we're going to get out of you evaluating the world. So, Mr. CAO, I hear that your role then is to judge the worthiness of questions that you receive from counselors. No, I just asked you what value it would have of you, you know, getting more more information on the road like what value that's going to add is or 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 uh is that going to overturn the road is is that going to go back and tell the engineers that uh, this doesn't meet standards i i, I not you know, at we all get to a, not we at get all it, we just have a, a more certain... detailed idea of what's going on okay And I, I do have to say, um, it's disappointing to get a plan like this that cannot be easily read. You have to get out the magnifying glass to see the uh, degrees in the, in the angles. Um, it would be good to get information where you don't have to work at trying to get the information uh, to be visible. Now, there won't be any compensation for the land. Will there be an agreement uh, made regarding the present intersection and the part of Eames Road that will no longer be used as a roadway leading to Garden View Drive? For instance, will that section of land be required to be landscaped? Where will the entrance to the remainder of the owner's lot be created? Currently, there's an entrance off of Garden View Drive that is blocked by concrete blocks. Um, is there going to be some amendments to the DA um, as a result of this expropriation? I just would jump in there, Councillor Linkart. You're speaking of the concrete blocks on the perimeter highway? No. Okay, because that has nothing to do with the municipality and no, entirely. No, I'm the speaking of the concrete blocking all accesses. Blocking the access to that particular lot. 
temporarily because they've dragged in all those semis and sea cans and all the rest of it um, that's presently there. Um, and that's the only way, uh, that looks like that's the only possible entrance, okay? There isn't an entrance to that lot off of Eames Road, uh, to my knowledge. Um, so I'm, I'm asking, is there gonna be a, an amendment to the agreement to take care of all the little details that are resulting to that portion of the land uh, that's, that's being expropriated? Mr. CEO, I don't have an answer for that question. I'll ask that again at the second reading then, okay? Um, I could just add at this point, um, we haven't had any discussions about amending the development agreement. Um, there have been discussions with the, the legal team um, that there might might be um, supplemental agreements, uh, not a development agreement, but additional like simple agreements drafted um, just to clarify um, that there's no compensation and that uh, construction has to be done to the municipal standards, just so it's clear. Okay. Now there have been additional legal fees and so on and so forth around this. Um, will the developer also be taking on the responsibilities for those costs. That, that's correct. That's good to hear. Okay, those are all the questions I have at this point in time, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Link. I just wanna ask a couple of follow-up questions now just for clarity, because it seems to be confusing. To either the CAO or Ms. Elias, this is an expropriation of land, a friendly amendment of altering where the road is going. So the piece of land being expropriated is strictly for curving Eames Road. I'm getting a bit confused because Councillor Link is talking about landscaping and changing a development agreement. The portion of land being taken is just to curve the road. Am I understanding this correctly? That's correct, Madam Mayor. Okay, so I'm not I'm not sure where the landscaping would come in if this is an expropriation just to curve the road to make it safer. I was just having trouble understanding. Um, you mentioned a couple of times at no cost to the RM. Just to clarify, either Mr. CAO or Ms. Elias, the extension of the road is going to be entirely paid for by the developer. So this oversight by Manitoba Infrastructure to not highlight and ask them to curve the road initially it's the developer that is suffering because of this oversight by Manitoba Infrastructure, who will now have to pay, is there any guesses at all, Mr. CAO or Ms. Elias, on how much the developer will have to now pay to reorient the road? Uh, I have an estimate, it's, it's uh, a, a, somewhere between 150 and $200,000. So the developer is is not thrilled about uh, reshaping this road and and all the other expenses that are attached to it. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I think that's important to ask and to mention because there's been a lot of questions about the benefits and how the developer benefits and what sort of gain they get from this. And it seems this oversight from MI initially, um, because of the confusion with it being a city of Winnipeg road, whatever happened here is going to cost these developers a quarter of a million dollars, possibly. Um, so this is no benefit. There's, um, it's unfortunate this wasn't addressed earlier. Thanks for the clarification. When uh, we have a second and third reading, there'll be opportunity to ask additional questions if council has any additional questions. I have a mover, a seconder. Um, the resolution did read as amended as Ms. Elias mentioned, and I will uh, ask for a recorded vote and I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. I'm going to uh, take a 10 minute break now and ask that council come back and resume at 740. Just take a quick break um, and we will resume the rest of the meeting uh, after a 10 minute break. Thank you.
All right, we are back live. Thank you to those watching our meeting for your patience. Um, Councillor Kleiber sent a message that she will not be joining us for the rest of the meeting. And so we will continue with the meeting. Uh, we are at 10.1 accounts. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that vouchers 42506 to 42573 as listed and totaling $244,911.44, void checks 4282 and 42507 totaling $32,507.55 and July visa payment totaling $8,043.50 be approved as presented. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Preg. Any comments regarding the accounts? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? I will abstain. Thank you. Thank you. And that is carried. We had the visa void check all attached. Item 12, there's uh, no payroll monthly statement attached, monthly financial statements, none. The CAO report, uh, I will read the resolution and then if there are questions. Be resolved that Council of the Road Municipality of West St. Paul accept the CAO report as information. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any comments regarding the CAO August report? Go ahead, Councillor Link. I see on August 9th, there was discussion about Whistler Hollow with the mayor. And on August 19th, there was discussion about Mollard Road with the mayor and the planner. Um, these two items involve the ward, um, Ward 1. Um, I am wondering if, um, um, there is any reason why I, 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 I um, shouldn't be at least notified of the reasons for these meetings, the, re the issues that are involved? Uh, you may be the counselor for the, the ward, but uh, there was there was no issues particularly involving you and their their uh, uh, their issues that we're dealing with uh, another jurisdiction on Mullard Road, so uh, it's it's more at that level and uh, and and uh, other areas that uh, I, I would think right now that uh, information wouldn't be shared with anyone and that we would update at a different time. All right, thank you. Councillor Prague, I noticed your hand up. Go ahead. Seeing that we're on this topic, I should make it like I know Councillor Link is said for Ward 1. And there's some confidential high discussions going on in your ward. And it entails the RCMP with an ongoing investigation. When this comes to light, I cannot use names, I cannot use my name or anything because of repercussions involved in these things. There's a thing, and I'll be, it deals with big marijuana grow operations in residential neighborhoods that's ongoing and causing havoc in these communities. Thank and you, I Council. cannot disclose the location of where it is because it's still ongoing. And it's not happening alone in your ward or it's happening in Garden City, in St. Andrews and things like that. It deals with the legalization of marijuana where licenses are issued. They get the, the, the license from Vancouver from doctors where there's a thousand plants and things going on. So there's ongoing discussions going on with this. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Craig. And since you are the um, appointed um, member to contact RCMP, you're in the know, I take it. That's fine. No, and that's correct. And once it's all over, then it comes back to the whole council. And even you personally, I'll inform you uh, because of the high um, stakes involved with families and so I don't want to put their lives into jeopardy. Of course not. Thank you very much, Councillor Bragg. Thank you. Any other questions from Council regarding the CAO report? You can see staff is very busy in a lot of different areas. Any com uh, comments, discussion, Council August report? and any discussion regarding animal control. All right, I have a mover and a seconder. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried, thank you. We have 14.1 miscellaneous correspondence for the month of April. Be it resolved that the Council of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul accept this miscellaneous the miscellaneous correspondence for the month of August as information. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded. Councillor Preg, any discussion regarding miscellaneous correspondence? Go ahead, Councillor Link. Just a question about the Manitoba uh, remittance for the federal share of the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. They refer to 1089. I assume that's the project number. And from reading the MLO's report, um, I, I would just like to clarify, are both Rossmore and Addis LID and the Rossmore Extension LID covered under the same project number? Mr. CAO, either to you or to our MLO, I will refer that to you. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if Laney knows offhand, but I wouldn't have that uh, uh, in front of me at the moment. Uh, thank you, Mr. CAO. I, I believe that reference is in the Director of Finance report, and I, I as well wouldn't have that at my fingertips. I'm sorry, I thought it was in your report, uh, Ms. Shaw. I'm sorry, I apologize. Any other questions regarding miscellaneous correspondence? Go ahead, Councillor Link. Not in the correspondence received during the month, but there's a member advisory from AMM about filling out a survey about uh, wastewater facilitator operator survey. Who should fill this out? I mean, this doesn't appear to be appropriate for council to fill out such a survey. Who would fill out such a survey? This is from the miscellaneous correspondence? Uh, no, it isn't. It's from correspondence that we got today through AMM. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're only talking about the agenda. You had okay. mentioned at the beginning I'll, that we're only speaking about things on today's agenda. Then I will wait. Uh, they want the survey answered now. That's why I'm asking. However, I can wait. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make sure at the beginning of the meeting, you said you want nothing else discussed or added to the agenda on here. And I want to respect um, what you stated at the beginning of the meeting, Councillor Link. Thank you for your. Thank you for that remark, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Moving on to general business, 15.1, we have miscellaneous meeting dates. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul authorize attendance at the following meetings as listed. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bracetti, seconded Councillor Pragg. Any discussion on the 
listed meetings. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Link. Question about August 20th, meeting with RM of East St. Paul Councillor. Um, the benefit to West St. Paul for that? The benefit to West St. Paul in terms of meeting other council members from other communities? Uh, a meeting with this one councillor, by the looks of it, from, from East St. Paul. And I don't know what that was about. Yep, that meeting uh, was discussing various issues, but Plan 2050 was um, one of them. And a newsletter article will be coming out uh, in our next upcoming newsletter about tw Plan 2050. And the RM of East St. Paul has been working on communication with their community um, to talk about Bill 38 and uh, Plan 2050 and help educate their residents. And so that was one of the things discussed um, during that meeting. Really, I'm, I'm surprised because it wasn't um... Wasn't the mayor of East St. Paul a chair, one of the chairs of the metro reason, region and, and be quite up on that? She was the co-chair and then the RM of East St. Paul had a resolution to withdraw from the yeah. uh, metro region. And so um, my understanding is she is no longer a co-chair. And um, there's a lot of concerns with plan 2050. Um, as you know, we have not been participating in uh, the Winnipeg Metro Region Board since last October. And since we withdrew and raised concerns about governance uh, and proper process, several other municipalities have raised concerns and now East St. Paul has withdrawn. Uh, so I'm what's important is having uh, a way to communicate to our residents um, in a simple way of what is Bill 37, 38 on permitting, um, what's Plan 2050 and how that could impact our residents. I'm surprised that you weren't meeting with the mayor of East St. Paul on this issue. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. I can clarify that this councillor's taken the lead um, and is working on an article and working on correspondence to be sending out to all of the residents. Um, and so if there was a council member on our in our municipality that was taking the lead on a project, um, then that would be the go-to person. So. This was the go-to person on uh, communication regarding Plan 2050. Thank you. Any further questions regarding miscellaneous meeting dates? Um, Councillor Kleiber is not here. Otherwise, I would ask if she was charging for the uh, arm golf tournament. Um, and I don't see that on here. So I, and she's not here, so I won't ask her. Um, I would note that the arm golf tournament this year was $150. I don't know if Others recognize that and Councillor Kleiber was the only one that attended that golf tournament. I think in the future, we're going to have to ask them why their fees are escalating for one member to golf for $150. I don't know what they're doing there, but we may want to ask them uh, going forward what, what their plan is in terms of escalating costs. Seeing no further questions, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. And that is carried. Item 15.2, Development Agreement S21-2882. This was a development agreement discussed in camera at the August Council meeting. And we were not able to finish that meeting in time. And so this is a carryover item. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved, the Council of the RM of the Borough Municipality of West St. Paul approved the development agreement for subdivision S212882. And further be it resolved that the mayor and CAO be authorized to sign the development agreement once a drainage lot grading plan has been submitted and approved by the municipal engineer. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded by Councillor Preg. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Item 15.3 is another development agreement that we discussed in camera at the August meeting and we're not able to vote on and finish because of time constraints and technology issues. Be it resolved that Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul approved the development agreement for subdivision S21-2886 and further be it resolved that the mayor and CAO be authorized to sign the development agreement. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded. 
Councillor Prague. Any discussion on that development agreement? I will ask for a recorded vote. Hearing and seeing no further discussion, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. 15.4, Manitoba Ombudsman file, again discussed at the August meeting. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul accepts the Manitoba Ombudsman draft report and recommendation to file 2018-0033. Can I get a mover, please? Move by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any discussion? Councillor Link. Before I have the discussion, Mr. CEO, would I have to go back in camera to discuss or are we able to discuss that out of camera? No, we'd have to go back in camera. This was an in camera discussion we had uh, the last meeting that-, uh, that You're on I mute, sorry. No, we'd, we'd have, have to go, go back, back in camera. camera. This was an in camera discussion that would come to a conclusion at the, uh, at the meeting that we could not finish. So we all have to go back in camera. Does that include an amendment to the resolution? I'll take us back into count camera to discuss Never it. Never mind. It's okay. That's fine. I don't mind at all. <laughs> if, if we want to go back, if there's further discussion, we can absolutely discuss. Just to confirm, Councillor Link, you do not want to amend the resolution? There's no point in going back into camera as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. I just don't want to be giving somebody not an opportunity to amend it for the sake of going back in camera. So as long as we're good with the resolution. I've read the resolution. I have a mover and a seconder. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. I'm down to 15.5. Tender 2021-8 uh, Fire Hall and Administrative Building Standby Generator and Associated Work. I'll read the resolution and then we can discuss. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul accept the bid for the 2021 Fire Hall and Administration Building Standby Generator and Associated Work submitted by ANN Electrical Limited in the amount of $117,500 plus GST and further that the $100,233.10 of the cost be borne by the capital budget and $17,266.90 be borne by the general reserve. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Mr. CAO, I will turn it over to you and your Director of Infrastructure to um, discuss this with Council. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to the Director of Infrastructure, but to point out also we have uh, uh, two supporting emails, one from the Fire Chief supporting uh, moving ahead with this, and one from our Municipal Emergency Coordinator uh, saying that this is very important for, uh, for the Council to move ahead with, and I'll hand it over to uh, Mr. Dave Romano. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Can everyone hear me okay? All right. Yes, this uh, uh, tender package was uh, approved uh, uh, in the financial plan for the standby generator for the fire hall administration building and associated works. The uh, tender was advertised uh, on Merck's as well as the uh, reader board, et cetera. Uh, at the time of tender opening, we received four uh, bids for the uh, tender package. Uh, the bids range from $117,500 to $200,850. The uh, background information uh, on, the, uh, on this uh, project was uh, due to, uh, we have many power outages within the fire hall administration building experience, frequent power outages. Uh, during these power outages, the uh, RM administration office cannot function properly. Internet is... Uh, is lost because there's no power, as well as uh, in the fire uh, hall as well. Uh, they uh, uh, experience fire, uh, power outages as well and causes a disruption in the services to provide to the RM and its residences, etc. So uh, in uh, discussions with the fire department, fire chief, deputy fire chief, as well as the emergency uh, 
municipal coordinator. Uh, it is very imperative that we have standby power for these two buildings so that we can provide essential services to the municipality residents within the RM. The um, overall budget uh, for this project uh, as uh, was approved was $205,000 as mentioned by uh, the CAO that uh, the budget is comprised of three components. One is for engineering, uh, one is for the uh, purchase of the standby generator and the other is for the installation. The standby generator cost, a budget was 85,000. That came in at $81,266.90. The engineering budget was 23,500 and that was at budget 23,500. The installation budget was $100,233.50 and uh, the low bidder was $117,500 uh, which uh, became, uh, which the number became 107, set part, excuse me, the budget was over by $17,266.50. Uh, I should note that the cola generator, which is purchased uh, from Pritchard Engineering uh, for the RM, uh, has uh, several other cola generators uh, within the RM. They're located at both lift stations as well as the Sonova Center. This will be the fourth COLA generator in the RM of West St. Paul. Uh, it, uh, we have a recommendation from the consultant engineer, Stantic Engineering. They've reviewed the tender package as well, and it's all in compliance with the tender documents. And their recommendation is to award to AN Electric. Also, AN Electric is core certified and a bonded contractor for electrical work, as well as. Uh, we did receive some recommendations that they are a good contractor to do this work. Uh, therefore, uh, we are in support of uh, awarding this contract to a and Electrical for this critical component for the Army of West St. Paul and the residents of West St. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Romano. And very detailed report to council on this. Thank you very much. I'm going to go around uh, the virtual council table here and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Romano? Uh, I can't recall if last year we bought the same type of generator for the Sonova Center. Am I correct? Or do you yes. Have yeah, we bought a standby generator, but it was of a different size. This is a, a larger size. Okay, that's why I was wondering why the cost went up. Yes. So it's a larger generator. That's right. And it serves two buildings where the generator at Sonova was just for the Sonova building. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Romano? Thank you for the very detailed report. I was hooking up to the um, admin building part of the original plan presented at uh, the budget. Yes, uh, Councillor Link, uh, when we did the original uh, uh, design and looking at two separate generators, it was more cost effective to have yeah. one generator for serving both buildings and that's why we did it this way. Great, thanks so much. You're welcome. Councillor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. Romano? No, I can't ask him any questions. He's got it all in his detailed report here. So thanks a lot. Thank you. No questions from me either. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Detailed report. Um, I do want to commend you um, on the projections when you're bringing um, estimates to council in February. Um, and it involves such a detailed project like this with so many components um, to be so close to bang on in terms of an estimate um, that this is 17,000 over and it's a it's a very difficult job I'm sure to estimate right down for council um, when conditions change market conditions change so um, you and Mr. Friesen have done a really excellent job of uh, of estimating for council of what those estimates should be and so we keep that in mind that um, more often than not 99% of the time um, you guys are way under um, and do a great job finding a great deal. So I do want to commend you. It's a lot of work to present to council, a lot of estimates ahead of time. And um, this is so close. So great Thank work. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I, I may I mention one other thing to Mayor and council that uh, 
There is a long delivery on equipment and materials. We will not receive this generator until March of 2022. So in all probability, we will not finish this project until April of 2022, when it'll be functional and operational. I, I, I forgot to mention that. Which is too bad, but good to know. I think for our residents watching as well, um, that don't see the budget deliberations and why this is being uh, approved and why this is needed in the event of an emergency, not just in terms of um, technology, uh, but in the event of an emergency to have that generator there and have business continuity for RM and, and manage risk is just so important. So uh, right now, if there was some kind of power emergency and power outage, the municipal office, the fire hall don't have that backup generator. So um, I'm really proud of, of you guys, our team, um, staff for um, taking a lead and getting it done at Sonova Center, um, which would house people if they were evacuated. And now our fire department and admin building will be protected in the event of an emergency. So our residents should know that safety is our top priority. Thank you very much. So I have the resolution. I have a mover and a seconder. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. I'm going to ask for a recorded vote. Sorry, Madam Mayor. I call for the question. All those in favor? Madam Mayor? Yes. I'm sorry, who was the mover and seconder? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Did you second that? Okay, seconded by Councillor Prague. My apologies. Thank you. Thanks. Mover, seconder, request for a recorded vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Item 15.6, I will read the resolution for the supply sander plow truck and we can discuss. Be it resolved that the Council of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul accept the bid for the supply of the sanding plow truck submitted by Maxim Truck and Trailer in the amount of $230,000, $611.75 plus GST. And further that further that the 230,000 of the cost be borne from the capital budget and $611.75 be borne by the general reserves. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded by Councillor Brissetti. Mr. CEO, I will turn it over to you and our Director of Infrastructure to discuss. Uh, thank you, Council. I'll hand it over to the Director of Infrastructure, but just point out that this is coming to Council uh, because of the, it's, it's over $100,000. So any purchase we make over $100,000, even though they're in the budget, even, even if they're under budget, if they've be, been tendered, they come to council. Uh, in this case, uh, it's, it's a little bit over budget. It's not a significant amount, but still I've asked the director of infrastructure to report to council on this. Okay. Uh, this is in regards to the uh, 2021-09 supply and sanding plow truck tender. Uh, Mayor and Council uh, approved the uh, $203,000 budget uh, for the financial plan. Uh, basically, the history of this is that uh, we have an existing sanding plow truck. It's an international. It's about 13 years old. has over 121,000 kilometers on it. Maintenance repairs have been 27,000 over the last four years. This includes mandatory and annual safety costs. During the year safety, it was noted that the truck frame is starting to delaminate. De Repair, if possible, could cost more than the truck is worth. And therefore, uh, it was recommended that we replace this to, to mayor and council and a mayor and council approve this in the financial plan. The uh, tender was advertised on Merck's as well as the reader board and, and elsewhere. Uh, the analysis, we only received two bids uh, for this. Uh, I was hoping that we'd receive more, but that's all we received. Maximum truck and trailer was $230,611.75. Inland was $242,733.47. The uh, delivery time on this will be sometime again. It's a long delivery. Probably we won't see this until April of 2022. And, uh, you know, I think probably the COVID issue with the pandemic is affecting deliveries. Typically, if you went back two years earlier, you would see this within, you know, a 12 to 14 week delivery. 
So the deliveries are sure extended basically due to the pandemic and the factory uh, delivery times. The, the uh, supplier is from Winnipeg, as well as the sanding and unit is manufactured and supplied from Fort Gary Industries that is attached to this unit. Uh, the uh, tender has been reviewed by the public works manager as well as myself and all is in compliance with the terms and conditions of the tender documents. And we're recommending that council approve this uh, for acquisition. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Go around the virtual council table again and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Romano? Um, so I guess the RM will, will have to be uh, relying on private companies for some of the sanding and plowing then until this uh, gets delivered, hey? Subject to weather. I mean, if yeah. we can handle it within house, we'll do that. But in all probability, we'll be doing some contracting Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bassetti. Any questions for Mr. Romano? Uh, just to yeah, just to follow up on that, our our two units are still viable right now, right? Like we still have two. Yes, two we do. Have, we have two units going. Uh, uh, the one that's uh, being uh, traded off is the one where the delaminating of the frame and that. So we'll just have to monitor that and see for safety reasons, how far we go with it. But is that one up for a new safety prior to the new one arriving? Uh, yes, there is a safety uh, coming up for that. So I guess we have to just weigh the pros and cons of how much we're gonna spend on a safety rather than subbing out and keeping that one going, so. You're correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Any questions for Mr. Romano? No questions, Mr. Thank you. One question from me when council approved this, it was part of a number of items from for the public works department, including the public works expansion of the building. Is this new beautiful $230,000 Sandra gonna be out sitting outside or will provisions be made for this to go inside? We'll make provisions for it to be installed inside temporary. Good, thank you. Any further questions, comments? Hearing and seeing none, I have a mover and a seconder. I will ask for a recorded vote and I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. So one year from now, we're gonna be able to see a new sanding truck on our streets. That's a long delay. The plow truck. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Thank you very much, Mayor and Council. And I wish you a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, that brings us to our last item on the agenda for this evening, 15.7, Rescue AMM Executive Director Dennis Volkoff from the Island Official Fundraiser for STARS. I will read the resolution and then um, our CAO can discuss and Council can discuss. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul approve a $250 donation to AMM Executive Director Dennis Volkoff's STARS fundraiser. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Link. Mr. CAO, I will turn it over to you. Yes, uh, the Director of AMM, Dennis Volkoff, is involved in a STARS fundraiser along with another uh, 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 a number of leaders in the community. And uh, they're, the theme is they're currently on an island and they're, they're raising money as the day goes on and they've got some, some uh, donators ahead of time. Uh, STARS is a unique and vital life state saving service to individuals and communities. We have not donated to this uh, before. STARS was built by the community for the community. So uh, there have STARS, uh, generally is is uh, really beneficial for communities a little further than ours, but we have in fact uh, had to use STARS and it's saved lives in West St. Paul, uh, people traveling through West St. Paul and, uh, and uh, there have been people in West St. Paul that have been transported. Uh, I want to point out that we have, uh, the provincial government is doing major repairs uh, on, on PTH 8 and 9, so on McPhillips in Maine, 
And, uh, you know, when I, I seen this and we hadn't donated before, I thought uh, with the tie up on Main Street and soon to be McPhillips uh, going through some major overhauls that, uh, you know, emergency vehicles uh, may not be able to respond and we may have to use STARS. I went to look at the RM's neighbors that have already donated to this cause. And I see the RM Arisho has donated sponsored this for $10,000, St. Rose, $1,700, Alexander, $1,000, Denauder, $1,000, Pine Falls, $210, and Arburg, $100. Um, so we have a resolution that, uh, that is asking that West St. Paul approve a donation for $200 uh, to sponsor the, the program here on their, their major sponsorship uh, on behalf of Dennis Volkoff, who will uh, be contributing to the uh, STARS program. I think this is, uh, you know, maybe the right time for the RM. We have not contributed to this program before. So uh, leaving it up to council, but that's the resolution on the table. Thank you, Mr. CAO, for the clarification and further information. Councillor Prey, go ahead. I think um, it's a very good donation for a good cause because on the news a couple of nights ago, they are updating their fleets up to date with taking out the old ones they have because they have reached their lifespan, bringing in brand new ones with more technology that can save lives. And as a matter of fact, a friend of mine was playing golf in Gimli had a heart attack and he had to be flown to St. Boniface Hospital because you're able to transport to an ambulance. They couldn't, but he eventually passed away, but it was used for a good cause and I'll support it 100%. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Councillor Bussetti? I'm good with supporting it. That's a good cause. Councillor Lake? I'm fine with supporting this. Thank you. I fully support this as well. And I commend Dennis Volkoff, the executive director of AMM, um, for putting himself on a deserted island with this group um, to raise funds for this. Um, AMM, for those watching who don't know, is Association of Manitoba Municipalities. And so um, they lobby for all of our municipalities in the province of Manitoba and for him to recognize the value of STARS to all of our communities. Um, I commend him. So this is great. And I think a $250 donation is, is excellent. I have a mover and a seconder, and I will request a recorded vote. And I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. That is our meeting for this evening. I will read the resolution to adjourn. Be it resolved that this meeting of council be adjourned. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, everyone.